There's a blog post that's making its rounds on the internet called 33 Reasons to Be a Feminist. And I'm going to refute every single goddamn one of them. And there's a lot, so we better get started right now. Hey, I'm in a new place. I'm right here in my very own living room. Through the magic of video editing. This is a high-budget production, ladies and gentlemen. And you should take it seriously. And uh, up here in the corner, I kind of feel like Pootie Pie. Except, you know, I don't suck. 33 reasons, ladies and gentlemen, to be a feminist. 33 reasons to be a feminist. Number one, because this type of violence glorifying and misogynist commercial is not unusual and get to exist in our society without many reactions. I mean, first of all, just looking at this ad, uh, you know, is it offensive, really? I mean, like, does it seem like it's violence glorifying? Why? Because he's holding her arm down? I mean, she doesn't look like she's really resisting. It's, it's something that, like, couples do when they have sex with each other. And there's nothing misogynistic about it either. I mean, there's nothing about this that I, I look at this image and I'm like, oh, well, she is obviously inferior to them. Like, I, I'm not really placing any sort of hierarchical value on anyone in the image. I mean, I think that you feminists are reading that into it because that's what you see. Because you see everything in those terms. You know? I mean, you create this, uh, this hyper-awareness of, of everything that you could construe as, uh, as, uh, as sexist. And then you act like, like we should all see it. Like, oh, look how obvious it is. It's not obvious. There's plenty of ways that this could be read that don't involve glorifying violence, that don't involve misogyny. It's, it's appropriate that society would not have some overwhelming reactionary response to this, like, oh, it's sexist. It's not sexist. Number two, because women don't get to decide over their own bodies. And then underneath it says 77% uh, of anti-abortion leaders are men, 100% of them will never be pregnant. Now, there's a lot of statistics that come up in this list, and I'm not going to bother trying to fact-check them, because every time you try to fact-check something like this, you can find plenty of contradicting studies. You can find studies that have numbers all over the place. So feminists are obviously always going to cherry-pick the studies that put it the highest and ignore the ones that put it lower and ignore whatever sort of uh, you know method was used to arrive at the different figures. But there's no point in arguing about the statistics themselves. Let's just accept this at face value and argue with everything they're saying as if their facts are completely true, because even then it doesn't hold up. Now this one, uh, this is a valid complaint. Of course this is a valid complaint in my opinion. I am pro-choice. I believe that a woman does have the right to choose. I think she does have dominion over her own body. I don't think that... Uh, just because, I mean, and, and, and really, it's irresponsible at this point to have a baby that you don't want. I mean, it, it's, it's really just the greater evil to bring unwanted children into this world. Even if you do have some ethical dilemma about uh, a fetus being terminated, surely it's better than the alternative at this point. Even though I agree with this being a problem, I don't see how feminism is the solution. You know, you can't just list a problem and then say, look at this problem, that's why you need feminism. No, you also have to do us the courtesy of explaining how feminism actually solves the problem. Three, because women are constantly sexualized and objectified while men get credit for their skills and professions. All right, listen, GQ is a men's magazine. Okay, what's going to get men to read a magazine? successful men who they aspire to be like and sexy women who they aspire to have sex with. Now, I mean, uh, look at these women. Like, how can you say these women are sexualized? But because when you go out in public and you wear a skimpy outfit and men ogle you, your excuse is, uh, well, there, there's nothing inherently sexual about me being scantily clad. It's just that you men see us that way. Well, there's nothing, if, if there's nothing inherently sexual about you being scantily clad, 
out in public, then there's nothing inherently sexual about these women being scantily clad on the cover of magazines. But of course, we both know that, yes, it is uh, inherently sexual. We know that these magazines are using sex appeal to get people to buy it, but so what? What is wrong with sex? Why is sex appeal a bad thing? Why is it bad for a woman to be sexy? Why is it bad for a man to be sexy? I don't understand why uh, sex is the villain. I I mean, is this the Dark Ages? Uh, Are you guys the newest incarnation of the church telling us what we can and can't do in the bedroom? Number four four and five kind of go together. It says, because this gets banned on Facebook, that's number four, uh, but this is fine. And it says, uh, tape her and rape her. Well, if you look at these two images, I mean, one shows uh, an actual vagina and another does not. Now, the policy that got this one banned while this one was fine is uh, the, the policy against nudity. One contains nudity, one doesn't. Now, you can say that clearly the tape her and rape her thing is far more offensive than simple female nudity, but this hypocrisy would be equally true for men. I mean, if, if you had if a big diagram of a penis, or you had some, some you know, guy's fucking cock hanging out in these pictures, but then you had something that said, you know, it's, it's okay to rape men in another, I mean, uh, which group is more likely to get banned? The one that shows the guy's dick. Because that is a a clear-cut policy against nudity. Number six is because 97% of rapists never have to spend a day in jail. Well, listen, rape is a very difficult crime to prosecute. Because usually it comes down to one person's word against another person's word. And if, if there's no physical evidence of rape, then you might as well just not proceed. Because the standards that our society requires for innocent until proven guilty just aren't met. You know, if there is a reasonable doubt that someone could have committed a crime, then we should not proceed. And rape, just by its very nature, happens to be, unfortunately, situated as a crime that is very difficult to move forward on by that criteria. So do we, what do, what do you feminists propose we do? We change the criteria. We say, okay, from now on, it's okay. Any man who is accused by a woman of raping her, we're just always going to believe her. Don't you see the enormously problematic nature of that solution? Don't you think that any vindictive woman would use that against any man that she wanted to persecute? Number seven, because model agencies are scouting models outside of anorexia clinics. When I do this this jerk-off motion, that's because what you said isn't even worth responding to. Eight, because women are being discriminated against in the workplace because they have children or may have children in the future. Put yourself in the position of any sort of company that's trying to run a business, that's trying to satisfy customers. Now, the reality is, if you're in that position, even if your sensibilities dictate that, you know, women shouldn't be penalized for getting pregnant, the reality is that if you have a woman in a crucial role in that business, and she all of a sudden takes maternity leave, that's a very big imposition. And you know what? If you say that's an injustice, fine. I agree. That's not right. But human beings didn't create that circumstance. Our biological nature did. Women get pregnant, men don't. It wasn't a man who designed that system. It wasn't the patriarchy. It was motherfucking nature. Number nine, because women still make less money for doing the same job as men. My problem with this argument is that it almost universally fails to take any other factors into account. All it looks at is, here's a man, he makes this much in this job, here's a woman, she makes this much in this job, we look at a bunch of different cases, we average them all together, let's see what the results are. Oh look, the women make less. But women behave differently, do they not? I mean, women get pregnant. Women have uh, periods. Women 
have different values. Women have different spending habits in this country. There's tangible ways in which women behave differently. Maybe women are less ambitious in the workplace. Maybe uh, it's that fear of maternity leave that prevents uh, employers from wanting to promote them to higher positions within the company. Who knows? I'm saying that there's other factors here that should be considered. It's not as simple as women are paid less because they're women. There's nuance here. I know that nuance makes a lot of people uncomfortable because, you know, it kind of muddies the, those crystal clear black and white, this is good, this is bad waters. So I know that people hate fucking ambiguity, but I'm sorry, it's out there and it must be confronted. Number 10, because there are parts of the world where women get punished after being sexually assaulted. Once again, I mean, obviously, that is horrible. It's true and it's fucking ghastly. No one is fucking celebrating that fact. Well, I mean, sure, yeah, there's, there's horrible fucking people somewhere celebrating that fact. But that is not something that feminism is even equipped to address. And this list alone proves that. You're not a serious movement. You're sitting there bitching about the cover of fucking fashion magazines. And you're fucking putting up straw men left and right. But you're going to solve this problem? You're going to solve the problem of women being punished after getting sexually assaulted in some cultures? Cultures where you have little to no influence? How? Explain to me how. Number 11. Because there are actually people who think it's not rape if the person is sleeping. Yeah, that's what we call evil, okay? Plain and simple. And once again, feminism's not going to stop evil, all right? The only way that we can do that is if we uh, advance as a species collectively. You know, you have to have social evolution here. You have to teach people not what to think, but how to think. You know, of course, a bunch of, you know, morons with no critical thinking skills are going to think it's okay to fuck anything that has a hole and can't say no at the moment. Or sometimes even if it can. But, you know, feminism's not going to fix that. You know what's going to fix that is if we actually bring back some form of real education in this country. Instead of just you know, teaching people rote fucking learning and just being like, yeah, here's a fucking test with, you know, A, B, or C. Here's your number two pencil. Be sure not to go outside the little border because we got a machine that grades all this. You don't teach people any sort of critical thinking skills. You don't teach people any sort of empathy. You don't teach people any sort of respect. How is feminism going to fix that? It's not about respecting women it's about a, a generation of people that literally lack empathy for anyone, men or women. They'll take advantage of anyone at any time the second that they see a benefit in it. And you're not going to fix that just by, you know, saying, yeah, women fucking are equals. These people that do this kind of shit don't care about women being equals. They're not equal with anyone in their minds. They're higher beings that can just fucking walk around and do whatever the hell they want because they think that there's no repercussions and oftentimes there aren't. But it starts with our education system. It starts with the way parents raise their fucking kids. How are you going to fucking fix that? What about feminism has the tools to solve that fucking problem? 12. Because one out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. Obviously, that's a, a sobering statistic. And I don't think that it's quite true, but it is close to true. The, the sexual assault numbers in this country are crazy. And it has a lot to do with the issue that I was just talking about in response to the previous one. Feminism just is ill-equipped to deal with a problem of this magnitude. It, it's so limited in its scope. It's so intellectually small. Its views on, on these matters are so overly simplistic that it's hopeless as any sort of coherent philosophy at this point. If feminism were to actually affect things like this, it would need to undergo massive reformation. 
Number 13, because we live in a society that teaches women to be careful not to get raped instead of teaching men not to rape. Once again, overly simplistic, mindless, idiotic solutions to the problem. What, what, first of all, both sexes should be taught right from wrong in all regards. You know, people should be told this is wrong and here's why it's wrong. Not just an edict, not just don't rape, but here is why you don't rape. Here is why that's not a good thing to do, because you're harming another human being who has the same sort of thoughts and feelings that you do. And you're hurting them in a way that is, is beyond the pale. It's not like you just hurt their feelings. You are seriously damaging them. You are fucking up their lives. And if you accept that, then you are an abysmal human being. And you do not deserve to live on this planet with the rest of us. That's what you teach them, not don't fucking rape. You don't just plaster it on the fucking wall like the Ten Commandments with no explanation and expect it to fucking sink in. 14. Because it is more dangerous to be a woman than a soldier in modern conflict. Not in the Western world it isn't. And in the Western world is pretty much the only place that feminism has any influence. So, to say that you have to be a feminist because of this fact is absurd. If feminism could actually affect change, or could demonstrate how change could be affected, then I would be on board. I would say, okay, feminism, you figured out how to solve this problem. You know what? I don't agree with you on the magazine covers or any of that stuff, but if I have to be your ally to solve this problem, I will do it. 100%. I'm there with you. But they, they don't have a fucking plan. They don't have an idea how to do that. They're fucking simpletons. Everything they do or say is reactionary and in the moment and doesn't require any sort of deeper thought, doesn't include any sort of nuance, doesn't look at any sort of other factors. It's absurd. Number 15. Because we want women's bodies to be left alone and not a constant subject for discussion, disrespect, abuse, and objectification. I'm sorry to tell you this, but any object in reality, whether it be the female body, or the male body, or uh, a stapler, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everything is going to be subjected to scrutiny and judgment. You know, you ever been driving through a neighborhood and someone points to a house with a really tacky, shitty paint job and they say, ugh. That person is a fucking cretin with no taste. But you know what? I'll, I'll kind of throw you a bone on this one. I will say that in this country, in this particular culture, it does become absurd. Yes. But it's not men reading these fucking tabloids, okay? This is not, like, you're showing Star Magazine. I don't see a lot of fucking big, burly truckers reading Star Magazine. I see a bunch of fucking 40-year-old housewives. 16. Because we need to change the patriarchal picture of men as an aggressive being who can't control his desires. I don't even know what the fuck this one is talking about. I'm sorry, I would refute it if I even understood it. 17. Because several young men can rape a girl during an entire night, Steubenville, or Steubenville, I don't know how to fucking pronounce it, Twitter about it while in action, laugh about it afterwards, and then be defended by the society which blames the victim because she was drunk. Okay, now, I remember this issue being slightly more divisive than that. I mean, sure, there were, uh, uh, there were a lot of people that, that did the ignorant, well, she was drunk. There were some people like that, I admit. But it did seem to me like the vast majority of people were pretty disgusted with it. And, uh, you know, I mean, even 4chan, which is like the neckbeard capital of the internet, went after these guys, so... I don't see your, your point here. I really just don't think that the narrative you're crafting here is accurate. 
Number 18, because a woman is raped every 14 seconds in South Africa. Well, is it the same woman every time? <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I really, I just don't know if that statistic is accurate. I mean, once again, it's just another example of, okay, sure, that's a problem, but how is feminism going to solve it? You know, where's the causal link? We, we embrace feminism as a society, and then this problem is solved. 19. Because sexism in the shape of a joke is not any less offensive or disparaging. Oh, well, in that case, you probably didn't appreciate that, uh, that, that was it just one woman joke from the last bit. I'm sorry about that. Um, jokes are jokes, and jokes should not be interpreted as actual opinion. Uh, they should be seen as exaggeration because every joke requires exaggeration as an element. To take a statement that you know to be exaggerated and then uh, interpret it as literal is... Well, it, it's fucking retarded. 20. Because victims of rape are too often distrusted, 54% of sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Once again, I would say, is this an example of rape victims being distrusted, or is this just an example of innocent until proven guilty, which is the cornerstone of how our justice system is supposed to function? Number 21, because every nine seconds in the U.S., a woman is assaulted or beaten. Now, once again, I don't know if that's true, but I do know that there is a lot more female on male domestic violence than is reported or that most people would have the impression of and it's not at all taken seriously I mean domestic violence against women in the United States of America is taken very very seriously I mean we've got some pretty tough laws on the books about women in domestic violence situations and I think that the general feel around America uh, if if I can uh, speak for the zeitgeist, is that beating up women is bad. Number 22, because this page has 1,768 too many likes, and the name of the page is This Is Why Indian Girls Are Raped. Given that there are hundreds of millions of people on the internet, I don't think that 1,700 perverts is anything you need to worry about, Okay. Number 23, because approximately 3 million girls are victims of female genital mutilation every year. Well, that's obviously bad, but it's not happening in the Western world. Once again, this is something that is happening in other countries where feminism really, it's not taken hold yet. Um, you know, and I agree that maybe those countries could do with a little bit of the kind of feminism that existed in this country in the early 1900s and late 1800s, but uh, it certainly doesn't need the, the Tumblr feminist simpletons of this time and age. Uh, I don't think that they could do anything to affect this problem. I just don't see how it, it's possible. Number 24, because there are approximately 2 million victims of sex trafficking each year. 85% of the victims are women. And who cares about the other 15%? Just a bunch of fucking Y-chromosome-having, fucking penis-having pieces of shit. Forget about them. Just concentrate on the 85% that are women. Because they are the only ones who deserve our empathy. Um... You know what, the, the reason 85% of the victims are women is because there are far more uh, heterosexual men who are in need of sex slaves than heterosexual women or gay men who are in need of sex slaves. It's just true, okay? I mean, uh, because any woman can have any man pretty much at any time. Whereas a lot of men cannot have any woman no matter how hard they try. Uh, those men are going to want to have uh, a sex slave that has no choice but to have sex with them. Now, these men are evil, and the sex trafficking thing should be dealt with, but it should be dealt with through, uh, you know, military means, basically. 
You know, you go in, you fucking kill the sex traffickers, you free the, the sex slaves. I mean, what is feminism going to do to solve it? Are, are they going to, uh, you know, like this post on Facebook? Reblog this on Tumblr? Sign this petition on whitehouse.org? Number 25, to spread awareness and knowledge about what feminism works for, equality. Everyone who has a mother, sister, daughter, son, or a friend would want them to have respect and rights, right? Sure, but once again, what the fuck does that have to do with feminism? Your stupid, ultra-specific, ultra-simplistic, moronic fucking philosophy on life that you laughingly call a fucking theory when it's barely even a hypothesis. Number 26, because this is a real commercial for American Apparel. Oh, God! Oh, why? Why? Uh, what? 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 So? So? What's the big fucking deal? What? I, uh, who's convinced by this? Who... Who, like, looks at this ad and like, Oh shit, that's it, I'm a feminist now. They can't get away with this shit. Number 27, because domestic violence is the leading case O oh, injury to women. More than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. Um, didn't we already do the domestic violence thing? It seems like 90% of this list is just a rehashing of the same three statements. Be a feminist because, you know, magazines and fucking, you know, uh, comic books and movies and, and TV shows, those are fucking sexist. Okay? And then rape happens, and then domestic violence happens. Therefore, be a feminist. And then I've refuted all of these arguments. Number 28, because this is a fact, and then uh, behind it it says, Want to hear something really scary? In 31 states, if a woman has a child as a result of rape, her rapist can sue for custody and visitation rights. Yeah, but you know what? That is an oversight, all right? It, it, there's, there's, it, there's not some lawmaker out there who fucking wrote a law that said, you know, if you're a rapist, you have this right. This is just an oversight in custody law. It just says the father can sue for custody and visitation rights. And in most states, no one bothered to put, like, except if you're a rapist, because no one even thought of that. Number 29, because we need to be aware of the sexism that surrounds us and say no to it. All right, so uh, there's some pictures of breasts, and then there's some pictures of other stuff that's meant to look, you know, erotic and enticing. And once again, I guess that we're just supposed to reject human sexuality. We're just supposed to reject our own biology. We're just supposed to say, no, oh, tits? No, I don't like those. What are you talking about? I'm only if we're in a relationship and consensually she lets me like her tits. Only then do I like them. You know, until then, I am I'm tit ambiguous. I see tits, I feel nothing. What, 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 what are you? What, what sort of fucking idiocy is this? You, I mean, like, if you have a, a magical machine to rewrite human DNA to make men and and women only attracted to people once that person has consented to them being attracted to them. Then, then go ahead and do it. Go ahead and use the laser ray, and we'll have a fucking perfect paradise where no one's eyes are led astray by a fine ass, or a big set of tits, or a big dick, or whatever the fuck you're into. Number 30, because we need to change the way women are being portrayed in computer games, etc. Oh yes, this is an important issue. Uh, we have to change these games that are primarily played by boys and men who they want, I mean, that this is what they want. This is what market forces dictate they be given. You understand that, right? Like, I hate Transformers. I think it's offensive and it's banal and anyone who watches it and enjoys it is a fucking idiot. But I'm not out there like, we gotta change this. We gotta get rid of this Transformer shit. I mean, you know, I do kind of feel that way, but the way I think of it is like, okay, obviously they're enjoying this Transformers thing because they have no critical thinking skills whatsoever, so let's go back 
to when they were young and actually give them critical thinking skills, impart upon them some skepticism, and then later on when they see Transformers, they'll be like, what the fuck is this? This is a pile of garbage. This is the same thing you gotta do, feminists. If you don't want men, uh, you know, drawing female characters like this, then go back, give them some critical thinking skills, and then men will be like, you know what, I want to see a sexy woman, but I also want to see one that's plausible. Ah, what am I talking about? Even if men have critical thinking skills, they're still gonna like that. There's just nothing you can do. The penis has a mind of its own, and when it sees that sort of proportionality, it's like, yes, I, I like that. That looks pretty good. Number 31, because female fetuses are being aborted in China because girls are not wanted. That has a lot to do with Chinese tradition, which is rooted in uh, the... which is legitimately patriarchal, actually. And, uh, you know, if, if you were in China and you were saying, we gotta take on the patriarchy, I'd be like, okay, you got a point. We, we should take on the patriarchy. Most of the feminists reading this are not in China. If you are in China, feel free to be a feminist. In fact, if you're in any of these countries where the injustices described in some of these, uh, these reasons to be a feminist, if you are in those countries that are afflicted or you are willing to go to those countries being afflicted, then I say be a feminist and fight for those things. Uh, but if you're here in America and all you really plan to do about it is bitch on your blog, then I don't see how you're being particularly helpful or productive. Number 32, because women who are seen, who stand up for their rights and express their opinions often get threatened and hated. Well, guess fucking what? I'm not a woman and I express my opinions and I get a tremendous fucking load of hatred. In fact... A lot of the feminists who watched the first 10 seconds of this video and then declared it the worst thing they've ever seen in their lives are going to hate me and threaten me. And I get hated and threatened by lots of people. By Muslims, by Christians, by conservatives, by crazy people who just fucking think I'm some Illuminati conspiracy thing. I get all kinds of hate. It happens to anyone that stands up and expresses an unpopular opinion. Do you think you're going to stand up and express an opinion, a strong and unyielding opinion, and everyone's just going to be like, I respect that. Dream the fuck on, okay? Dream the fuck on, you crazy motherfuckers. And finally, fucking finally, number 33 because three men in Sweden walked free after raping a girl with a glass bottle until she started to bleed. Wow, you ran out of stuff, I guess. I mean, a even after reusing the same stuff, you had to close on this weak anecdotal shit. Be a feminist because uh, three men in Sweden walked free after raping a girl with a glass bottle until she started to bleed. Yeah, this one thing happened this one time, therefore adopt uh, this whole new way of looking at the world. I mean, do you see how ridiculous that sounds? I'm TJ Kirk, better known as the Amazing Atheist. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, comment on this video, rate this video, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and anywhere else that you could possibly find me. I am once again the Amazing Atheist. Double peace, double fuck, double out.